In the dark skies of World War II, a remarkable aircraft emerged, built to strike fear into the hearts of enemy aviators. Its sleek and sinister design, combined with cutting-edge radar technology, gave birth to the ultimate nocturnal predator. Welcome to my video exploration of the P-61 Black Widow, the night fighter that prowled the shadows and turned darkness into an ally. Join me as I unveil the secrets of this iconic aircraft, delving into its innovative design, unmatched firepower, and the brave aviators who took to the skies in search of victory. From the dense jungles of the Pacific to the starlit skies over Europe, the Black Widow struck fear into the hearts of enemy pilots. Its radar eyes pierced through the night, hunting down adversaries with deadly precision. In this thrilling journey, we'll uncover the secrets behind the Black Widow's advanced radar system, its devastating armament, and the countless stories of heroism and daring missions that shaped its legacy. So, buckle up and get ready for a captivating tribute to this aircraft that prowled the skies under the cover of darkness, forever etching its name in the halls of aviation greatness. The development of the P-61 Black Widow began in 1940, when the United States Army Air Corps issued a specification for a dedicated night fighter aircraft. The Northrop Corporation, led by designer Jack Northrop, won the contract and began work on the project. The initial design concept featured a twin-boom layout with the cockpit placed at the front of the aircraft to provide better visibility for the crew. Northrop engineers also recognized the need for advanced radar technology to detect and engage enemy aircraft at night. To power the aircraft, the P-61 was fitted with twin Pratt & Whitney R-2800 double WASP radial engines, which provided ample power for its size and allowed for high speeds and long-range capabilities. The P-61 underwent a series of design refinements and testing throughout its development phase. This included modifications to improve its aerodynamics, enhance its radar capabilities, and increase its overall performance. By 1943, the P-61 Black Widow prototypes were ready for production, and the first aircraft rolled off the assembly line. The initial units were designated as YP-61, and were used for further testing and evaluation. The P-61 entered service with the United States Army Air Forces in 1944. Its first combat deployment took place in the Pacific Theater, where it proved highly effective in intercepting and destroying enemy aircraft during night missions. The aircraft's success led to its deployment in the European Theater as well. As the war progressed, the P-61 continued to evolve, with later variants such as the P-61B and P-61C featuring improved radar systems, increased firepower, and refined engineering. These advancements further solidified the P-61's reputation as a formidable nighttime fighter. The most distinctive and groundbreaking feature of the aircraft was the installation of the radar on the P-61, which stemmed from the growing need for an effective night fighter aircraft during World War II. As nighttime bombing raids became a significant threat, the United States Army Air Corps recognized the importance of developing an aircraft with the ability to locate and intercept enemy planes in low-light conditions. The concept of using radar for airborne detection had been in development prior to the war, but it was during the conflict that radar technology rapidly advanced. Radar systems were initially bulky and required large equipment, making them unsuitable for integration into existing fighter aircraft designs. However, as radar technology improved, it became more feasible to incorporate it into aircraft designs. In the case of the P-61, the Northrop Corporation recognized the potential of radar and designed the aircraft from the outset to accommodate this new technology. The innovative layout of the P-61 with its twin booms and cockpits set forward in the fuselage allowed ample space for the installation of the radar system in the nose of the aircraft. The specific radar system chosen for the P-61 was the SCR-720 developed by the Western Electric Company. This radar had the capability to detect and track enemy aircraft at significant ranges, providing crucial situational awareness for the crew. The SCR-720 utilized a combination of radar antennas and indicators to display targets on a screen in the cockpit, allowing the crew to identify and engage enemy aircraft. The P-61 had an active service life during World War II and its immediate aftermath. It played a vital role as a night fighter, intercepting and engaging enemy aircraft in both the Pacific and European theaters of operation. However, the P-61 had an inauspicious start to its combat in the European theater. Some believed the P-61 was too slow to effectively engage German fighters and medium bombers, a view which the RAF shared, based on the performance of a single P-61 they had received in early May. 
The 422nd Night Fighter Squadron was the first to complete their training in Florida, and in February 1944, the squadron was shipped to England aboard the RMS Mauritania. The 425th NFS soon followed aboard the RMS Queen Elizabeth. But the situation deteriorated in May 1944, when the squadrons learned that several US AAF generals, including General Hoyt Vandenberg, believed the P-61 lacked the capability to successfully engage German fighters and bombers, being too slow. General Spatz asked Ford de Havilland Mosquito night fighters to equip two U.S. night fighter squadrons based in the U.K. His request was denied due to insufficient supplies of mosquitoes, which were in demand for a number of roles. However, a P-61 shot down a BF-110, and shortly afterwards, the squadron's commanding officer, Lt. Col. O.B. Johnson, his P-61, already damaged by anti-aircraft fire, shot down a focke Wolf 190. The 425th NFS scored its first kill shortly afterwards. By December 1944, P-61s of the 422nd and 425th NFS were helping to repel the German offensive known as the Battle of the Bulge, with two flying cover over the town of Bastogne. Pilots of the 422nd and 425th switched their tactics from night fighting to daylight ground attack strafing German supply lines and railroads. The P-61's four 20mm cannons proved effective in destroying German locomotives and trucks. Another case was on the 30th of January 1945. A lone P-61 performed a mission as part of the successful raid carried out by U.S. Army Rangers to free over 500 Allied POWs held by the Japanese at the Cabanatuan prison camp in the Philippines. As the Rangers crept up on the camp, a P-61 swooped low and performed aerobatics for several minutes. The distraction of the guards allowed the rangers to position themselves undetected within striking range of the camp. Poet and novelist James Dickey flew 38 Pacific Theater missions as a P-61 radar operator with the 418th Night Fighter Squadron, an experience that influenced his work, and for which he was awarded five bronze stars. The 418th produced the only U.S. Army Air Force night fighter aces in the Pacific, a pilot radar operator team. Back in Europe, the 422nd produced three ace pilots and two ace radar operators. Radar operators and gunners shared kills with the pilots at the time, while the 425th officially claimed none. Lieutenant Cletus Tommy Ormsby of the 425th was officially credited with three victories. Ormsby was killed by friendly fire moments after attacking two Junkers JU-87s on the night of the 24th of March, 1945. His radar operator escaped with serious injuries and was saved only by the quick actions of German surgeons. He later reported that they had successfully engaged and shot down both JU-87s before being shot down. This claim corroborated with other 425th aircrew who were operating in the area at the time. An interesting thing to note is that historian Warren Thompson wrote that it is widely believed that the last enemy aircraft destroyed in combat before the Japanese surrender was downed by a P-61B2 named Lady in the Dark, of the 548th NFS. This aircraft piloted by Lt. Robert W. Clyde and RO Lt. Bruce K. Leeford on the 14th to 15th of August 1945 claimed a Nakajima Ki-44 Toho. The destruction of the Toho came without a shot being fired. After the pilot of the Toho sighted the attacking P-61, he descended to wave top level and began a series of evasive maneuvers. These ended with his aircraft striking the water and exploding. Clyde and Lefford were never officially credited with this possible final kill of the war. Another strange fact was that since pilots and radar operators did not always fly as a team, the kills of the pilot and radar operator were often different. On some occasions, a pilot or radar operator with only one or two kills would fly with a radar operator or pilot who was already an ace. Now, in terms of after the war, there were some minor missions, and at the start of the Korean War, a few P-61s were almost deployed for night interdiction missions. However, they were quickly replaced by more modern jet-powered aircraft just about a month before the war in 1950. Overall, this left the P-61 Black Widow with a successful service life, achieving numerous victories and establishing itself as a formidable night fighter. Its advanced radar capabilities combined with its firepower and endurance made it a valuable asset in protecting Allied forces and infrastructure
from enemy nighttime attacks. It is important to note that the P-61 could be viewed as having a relatively short-lived active service due to the rapid advancements in aviation technology after World War II. Jet-powered aircraft and the introduction of more sophisticated radar systems rendered the P-61 obsolete. However, the impact and legacy of the P-61 as a pioneering night fighter aircraft remain significant in the annals of aviation history. As we conclude our exploration of the P-61 Black Widow, let us never forget the indomitable spirit that guided its creation, and the gallant aviators who flew it into the pages of history. The Black Widow's sleek form may have vanished from the skies, but its legacy as a legendary night fighter will forever be etched in aviation greatness. So, as we bid farewell to this remarkable aircraft, let us remember the P-61 Black Widow as a symbol of innovation, perseverance, and the unwavering commitment to protecting freedom in the darkest of nights. If you enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. Maybe leave a comment about your thoughts on the P-61 and drop a suggestion for a future video. As usual, you can check out my other content above, and if not, I hope to see you around.